Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play StarCraft, Starflight, Star something game 2. I am Mysterious JG. You will notice we are not at the same place we were last time we were together. Channel viewer, that is because I had a video get eaten by Camtasia. I'm getting really frustrated about it. I've got a support claim in. They've asked me to do exactly the same. I put in my support ticket. This is the exact same issue as before a couple of months ago. No hardware changes to the system and they still ask you to do all the same. They don't read your, your thing before they give you certain steps like run this so that we can get your you know DirectX or whatever the hell configuration settings blah blah. So they're gonna try to help me out with that again. In the meantime it's killing me. I can record like an hour and 30 minute StarCraft video and everything seems fine and then I did like a half an hour 40 minute StarFlight 2 video and it got eaten. Part way through that video I saved because I figured I've been really nervous about saving during videos but I figured you know I just got done recording several 90 minute StarCraft videos how could I possibly fail to record a half an hour video? One third the length well, maybe closer to half. It's almost 45 minutes, but it's like half the length, and it's a DOS game with much lower graphical complexity. I'm sure it'll be fine. Boom, it gets eaten. But what I had done in the last video, which you missed, and I'm going to now attempt um, to actually do something. Uh, yeah, we're not going to go with this. The reason I saved... Um, this is getting complicated. I had a video that got lost because I got killed, and I was only a few minutes into the video, uh, and I scrapped it. Um, and then I was going to show you how I got killed, so I saved to show you how I go how I got myself killed before. And then, yeah, so I got myself killed, but I don't want to show you that yet. I want to resume without. No, I want to quit without saving. I want to resume my current game. And I want to, before that encounter occurs, I saved before that encounter that I was going to get. I want to just quick show you what I did that you missed. Because, you know, people like their LPs to be reasonably complete. So I was going to show you more or less what happened. Uh, no, it's Navigator. I think I need to go to Navigator. And maybe not Navigator. Maybe it's Engineer Jump Pod. This is something you guys haven't seen yet, so we'll use this as an excuse to show you a jump pod. What really happened is... Can I do uh, trade route maps on this? Uh, yeah, I can, even when I'm in the middle of using the jump pod. I decided that we were going to go back in time. We're going to go back in time! Uh, and to go back in time, you need to go... to this fluxy thing up here, Flexi Lex. So you need to come up here to, uh, to go back in time. Uh, and I figured, well, while we're going uh, from uh, the out, I was like upspin, downspin, uh, coreward, and outward. While we're going from outward to coreward, Let's just do the downspin trade route, and that way I'll get enough money to buy enough shinium pennies to have enough shinium to make sure that we're all suited up and good to go. Good to go, Commander. So we came down here to the Liu Vadish planet, which you guys hadn't seen yet. Bought delightful fungus chews, sold them to the Humna Humna, and then I was, before selling phase inductors to the Gnuck, was going to come down to the Arrow constellation to get more... Um, midberries because we expect that when we're in the past we might be able to encounter the dweenal because the dweenal had been around since those times so the dweenal we're expecting to encounter we figure we'll need midberries to get anything useful out of them so in that last video i came here to where the liu vadish are and um i just want to no not doing that sorry my mistake i was trying to clear out the trade route maps so we want to go to the planet of Liu Vadish, which is over here. And uh, in order, since I'm going to load anyway and not save this, I already did this, but then the video got eaten. So I want to show you guys Liu Vadish real quick. Jump pods consume 15 centimeters cubic meters of shinium. Proceed. Yes. You have to confirm yes no before it calculates your percentage accuracy. That pisses me off. You should be able to compute the percentage accuracy and then decide whether or not you want to burn the shinium trying to jump. But the jump was successful. Teleport successful. And uh, 
no, no, no. We did make the jump correctly. So 15 cubic meters of shinium, and we got from here to here instantly. From here to here. Now, our chances... When you fail to make the jump, I don't know if that means you end up in the middle of nowhere or if you just don't end up on the exact spot you went, wanted to go to. So let's visit the Liu Vadish, and then I will play with the jump pod again to show you the jump pod failing by jumping to some place where I have like no percentage chance of making it. Because uh, your percentage chance of making it, they hint at this but don't tell you outright. It's determined by the orbit of nearby stars. The more stars are around and the more gravity they're exerting, it seems to increase the accuracy. So if you go someplace with a lot of stars, uh, you have a good chance of making the jump. So what I'm going to do is go someplace with like, no stars at all, just so we see what happens if the jump fails, because uh, it seems like they've all been successful. Frustratingly, this is a sparsely populated planet, so we're gonna sp might spend a lot of time looking for the Liuvatish, just so you can see a wild picture of them. Inhabited by the Liuvatish, Stone Age, sparsely populated, depressed economy, they bargain a little. Supremely arrogant race of tall, broad-winged, furry scavengers, appearance is all important to the Liuvatish, and they adorn themselves in elaborate fashion. They will sell at their trading centers jeweled Jiao Jing Tai, and they will buy... And uh, sell delightful fungus shoes. But the big thing they want to sell you is jeweled Xiao Jing Tai, which I started in the last video making Jing Tai. Because look at it, it's like Jing Tai Tai, whatever. Xi Jong Chai Zhao, made up Chinese, racist jokes. Yeah. Descend into madness. Machu Madness, ooh yes, yeah, space is the place, so you shouldn't be leaving it to explore this planet, ooh no. Alright, so we're going to find these guys, we already bought their delightful fungus shoes, so in all likelihood they won't actually have any to sell us, but... This is such a waste of time. Because, you know, once you talk to them one time, all their dialogue, their their trading dialogue, once you've gotten past their introductory dialogue, is exactly the same. I mean, even the, even the aliens who are clearly humanoid will talk to you about their pod mates. Alrighty. I don't see why we can't recommend this world for colonization and just, like, invade and destroy the Leo Vadish, and it would be like a cool sci-fi series of Leo Vadish fight back. We're like the visitors from V. And then they could do a remake that's got, like, the hot chick from, uh, uh, Firefly, but it is in every way awful. <laughs> God, that show was hilarious. It squandered every good idea it had. I wish it would come back. Rather than wrapping up its story, it, it, you know, stubbornly insisted on setting up a season two that would be totally different from everything that had gone before, and so there was any chance that that show was going to get another season. I guess it would have been season three. It might have gotten two seasons. All right, so just looking for the frickin' and you know when I find them I'll probably load so I don't have to go all the way back to the ship but I'm still going to show you guys the um, what happens when you fail with the jump pod we failed to use the jump pod do you want to trade? yes you have come to us as all must. Sooner or later you will learn our ways, and so we will first engage in the ritual of trading. Of course you wish to buy our beautifully, beautiful jewel, Xiao Xing Tei. It's simply a question of how many you can afford. And they're like, they look like angels, but like death carrying angels or something, I don't know. But you're supposed to buy from them. I think we already bought all the delightful... We were going to say we were not out of stock yet, because I bought them all. And sold them to the Humna Humna. But you can buy the Jewel Jing Tei. 2093, do we have a deal? I don't even know what the hell that is. It's got feathers, jewels. It looks like a bicycle horn with a, a 
fake tongue and some jewel. I mean, I think this is supposed to be ridiculous. And the fact is that if you buy these, you can't find anyone to buy them back from you. You cannot sell these. Nobody wants them. So, um, refuse. As you wish. Now can we come back to that item? My feelings are hurt. I sulk. Yeah, they're still angry. Very well, no diva, then. I see, you believe, blah, blah. Yeah, I pissed them off. But they don't kick you out like uh, you're trying to buy a ship from them and you, you offer for too little. They just get cheesed off. So let's quit without saving. And uh, restore our game. And I'll show you what happens when you f fail with the jump pod. Or when you use a jump pod uh, in some place with no stars and have like no chance of successfully jumping. It's Ruby Malone. Fuck you, JG. Why didn't people watch the wet LP? That was a, I love that game so much. That LP deserved to be bigger than Jesus. Or at least my LP of Jesus, which I didn't do an LP of Jesus. Okay, so now we're jumping to some place with like no stars anywhere nearby. 10% chance of successful jump. Oh no, it's not that the jump is... Gravitational distortion encountered. We have missed the target site. So where did we go instead? We do get a different message. And we didn't end up very close. So yeah, I guess if... Uh, we can just go straight to another one, but... No. Now we're going to encounter the Umanyu and get killed. Find someplace else with no stars nearby. No stars particularly close to here. Maybe 10 is the bottom. Maybe that's as bad as it can get. We have missed the target site. Okay, it if you miss, it does put you in the neighborhood. That can't be a random result. We tried over here someplace, and we ended up over here. Then we tried over here, and we ended up there. So if you if you fail the the you know the the roll uh, for luck or accuracy or whatever, it dumps you nearby, but not at the exact spot. So it's not like you. I tried to jump next to these three stars because I think there's a planet here where I can trade, and you end up like, you know, in the the sphincter of the cloud nebula, and like eight billion Umanyu ships immediately kill you. So, okay, understood. I now get how that works. Let's uh, once again quit without saving, because if I save at this point, I'll have wasted two jump pods, and I might need them eventually. Let's resume our current game, and let me show you how I got myself killed in the video that was lost because of me and not because of the recording software. I was cruising around. I've already sold uh, the Delightful Fungus Chew to the Humna Humna and bought Data Crystals, and I decided that because the Humna Humna get upset if you encounter them with your weapons armed, I would leave the shields down and weapons unarmed. Even though I also know that the Ganuck sometimes will get upset if you don't have your weapons and shields and stuff. I figured I would be able to react and deal with them. Or that I would have a chance to, to change my tune if they hailed me and said, Why aren't your shields up? I would just put them up. But I underestimated how upset they got. You see, it starts out yellow, but then it glows red. This is the ISS Blue Dragon, and they start shooting at you. And you get destroyed in like two hits. I'm a little surprised at that. Last time they gave me a, a, a message first. Um, it's, uh, they, they hailed me and they said something like, um, 
you are showing a dangerous lack of aggressiveness. We should, we must teach you a lesson in survival. And then they attack you. And that's the problem. Is if you're close to them and they attack you and you're not expecting it, like two hits and you're dead with your shields down. You get one hit, wipes out your armor completely. The second one basically destroys your hull. So we will resume the current game. In the video that got destroyed, I actually um, got some revenge for myself and killed them and gathered up the Endurium to sell to the Ganuck and confirmed something I had already believed, which is that I had the wrong number. I accidentally hit space in there and threw it off. Uh, and confirmed something I was already pretty sure about, which is that even if they attack you because you have your shields down uh, and they don't think you're being aggressive or respecting Ganuck by showing your survival instinct. Once you fight them off and destroy them, beat them off, I almost said they're true. Um, you become their friend again. As a matter of fact, they offer to trade crew members again. So that was kind of weird. But, um, in fact, if I don't encounter them at all, I'm not going to worry about it because um, that video ended up being like 45 minutes long and I intended to get to the point where we're ready to travel in the past before ending the video. And I, damn it! I was hoping that it would actually tell me what the biomass was. Maybe you get that from sensors. Bio zero percent. Okay, I knew that you got that somewhere because the system scanner is a shortcut to getting information for the whole system instead of planet by planet. But it doesn't give you information you couldn't get otherwise. And I know that, I think it's a planet in this system that has uh, Nidberries. And it's this one. So if we were trying to log this planet, it's already logged because we already logged Nidberry planet. And I didn't mean to maneuver, I meant to land, to land, oh well, whatever. Okay, we'll actually have a little bit less money now than I would have had at the end of the video because we're not going to spend time destroying the Ganuck and then selling um, the Endurium we got from the destroyed Nuck ships to other Nuck. That's okay, because we ended up with like more fuel than we could carry by the time I spent all of our trade profits on fuel. Shields are down, weapons are disarmed, because you can't leave the ship while that's all gone. I don't really remember what Nidberries look like, but I'm pretty sure this isn't them. That's a hive plant. The hive plant is under attack. Oh, that's right. They look like um, hot fungus. And that's probably enough, because I think when you give them Nidberries, they take all of your Nidberries. So there's not much point in me looking for more, but... I found them so quickly. And maybe I'll just find one more Nidberry plant in the hopes that that does make a difference somehow. I'm curious what this uh, life form up here that's moving around is, because I remember this plant being completely covered with uh, plant life, and that was it. Well, it's coming towards me, so... The life form of Pax Fleet... It's the... Uh, what is it? I can't even try to pick it up. Appears to be a large sphere of blazing energy hovering several feet off the ground. Okay, that's it's called like a dark lightning or something. Um, it just attacked nobody. It's killing everybody dead. Did it actually just kill my whole crew? I thought I would see them there with like zero vitality. Are they actually all dead? That would mean I'm going to have to load. That sucks. I'd found the Nidberry so quickly. Captain Seymour Guado. I'd made Bombo the, the captain. Science Officer Seymour Guado. Engineer Ruby Malone. Navigator Ruby Malone. Can you catch? Yeah, it, that thing killed my entire freaking crew. All right, so... Should not have hung around just curious to see what that thing was. up I, I, I decided I wasn't going to bother to stun it and capture it because I didn't want to waste time. And it said it killed my entire crew. So, okay, this is a fun video so far. My entire crew's been killed by the Ganuck. Now my entire crew's been killed on the surface of the planet by Dark Lightning, whatever it's called. I didn't even, even get to find out what it's called. 
that would have been a really bad time to accidentally press save. So we're going to resume the current game. Oh, jeez. Now I raised my shields and armed my weapons. I didn't even encounter the damn Ganuk. So I'm tempted to just blitz through to that planet without doing, without bothering. But if I do, I'm basically guaranteed to encounter the Ganuk. So... Sure enough, now that I didn't bother, I don't encounter the Ganuk. And if I encounter any dark lightning on the planet, I might just have to kill it. Not necessarily collect it, just kill it. Wow, that's, that stuff is killing my, my crew members like lickety split. I didn't think it was considered that dangerous. Bio 100. I want to check that now. I want to check something out. Uh, the Starflight 2 game manual. Something called an electric balloon, which has a danger level of 2. I don't think that was it. And you can't even see it, because uh, it's off the side of the page. It's like a glow, a floating, maybe it is an electric balloon. I'm not seeing that many pictures of floaty guys. Humming stone. Hmm. I'll shrink this thing down so you guys can see it. Sorry. And it just unshrunk it for me. Okay. You can't see the whole thing. We can see most of it. None of these things look to me like. It says as it gets close, it's nearly unbearable. Maybe there's a life form that's not mentioned. I do remember hearing in the the uh, hint book about like something called like dark lightning, which was like really deadly. It just looks like. I guess it's just not mentioned. Uh, Alright, so if we want to find out what it is, I'll have to actually kill it. Uh, which I wasn't planning to bother to do, but now I'm curious. Because, you know, last time we came here to get Nidberries, uh, my, the vast majority of my crew were not killed. Even Robot Bombo got killed. Robot Bombo has an like the highest uh, endurance the game gives you, and he was instantly killed by that thing. Now I just, now I gotta go hunt one down. Now I'm curious. Uh, I found a whole other way for this video to be too long. And what really sucked is that we found Nidberries quickly. We're in a windstorm. We found Nidberries quickly. You can take a, a lot of work to try to find a Nidberry in this game sometimes. So it's a world inhabited by plants, one of which was like mildly dangerous, but for the most part the plants are harmless, and then super death creatures that just kind of float around. Like those guys on the homeworld of the Spuda, or whatever they have. No, Spuda's the name of the spam in homeworld. Those little guys from Star Control 2, and Star Control I suppose, who uh are afraid of everything, and then you find out there's like some super predator on their planet, but when you encounter them, they don't react to you at all, because they just really love eating those guys, and uh, become like super aggressive when those guys appear, but if they're not around, they just don't do anything. They're probably like genetically engineered by the weird, mean, multiple eyeball guys. Anyway, well there's the Nidberries. Half a fuel used, ah, oh, damn it. Now I decided I was going to get more than one Nidberry bush, just in case, but I think they take all the Nidberry you got every time, but just in case. We used up half of the fuel, so now I'm like taking great risks by still wandering around, sort of. I never got the planetary teleporter, I've gotten that on previous plays. That means that you can press a button to transport your train vehicle back to your ship. 
which basically doubles your range because it means you can use all of your fuel and you don't have to worry about making a return trip. It would be more useful in Starflight than in Starflight 2 Trade Routes of the Cloud Nebula, because in Starflight you're out hunting for minerals and you can get pretty far afield of the ship, and in Starflight 2 Trade Routes of the Cloud Nebula you pretty much just need uh, to find a trade center, and that's it. Usually on planets that have them, you don't search that far before you find one. Now we're not finding any of those dark lightning things. And since I don't remember ever having seen one before, I'm not sure how rare it is to find them and how much time I want to spend looking. TV lifeform shield really didn't seem to do very much against the dark uh, lightning anyway. So we're continuing to hunt for the thing that just kind of surprised me by killing me completely before. Although obviously not in a way that upset me too much. I still feel pretty chill about this whole thing. But If we see more nidberries, we'll pick them up. But uh, now the point of this is to see if we can find that one like roving electric ball of death. There's one. This appears to be a large sphere of blazing energy hovering several feet off the ground, approximately three times the size of the train vehicle. Oh, I didn't know that. That might have made a difference. It moves rapidly over the ground with no visible means of propulsion. Within the sphere is a core of charged electrical energy that appears as writhing dark inverse lightning. The object or life form projects a crackling, throbbing, subsonic force that is intensely disturbing and at close range is utterly unbearable. Is it stunned? It does not appear to be stunned. I don't think that's the little electric balloon enemy that we read about. I'd rather not kill it, but it'd be nice to capture one alive. It's wanted! Dead or alive! It's still coming at us, though. I'm thinking it's three times the size of the train vehicle, and it's made of some kind of unknown dark energy. Maybe we just need to leave it the hell alone. I keep wanting to give it a second for the, uh, this thing is stunned uh, graphic to appear over it and not keep shooting at it and killing it. But... I'm using up energy by shooting at the thing too, I believe. Okay, this thing does not appear to be something that you can kill. It might explain why it's not listed in the manual. So let's just get the hell out of here. It consumed uh, four of my six crew members. It consumed two-thirds of my crew, even Robot Bombo. I don't think it was a matter of them living, you know, surviving a single hit or what. I think the thing just freaking absorbed them. Like, messing with this thing would be like trying to... Let's go back and reason with the tar monster that killed Tasha Yar. It's like, no, just leave it alone. Thing's an asshole. Leave it alone. Warn people not to go to this planet. This planet's inhabited by an asshole tar monster that kills Tasha Yar. Okay. Now that I've nerded it up... I'm already playing Starflight 2 Trade Routes of the Cloud Nebula. How much more do I need to nerd it up? Uh, now we're at the half hour mark, and I wasted a lot of time or whatever, but, um, I still want to get to the point where we're ready to, um, go to the pass in the next video, so I'm going to go ahead and finish my trade route. Ooh, we could visit the Nelsons. I think we've seen the Jaboon. We could pull two trade routes at once here. I could stop by and visit the Nelsons. I hadn't thought about this. 
Oh, well, the, hum uh, the Ganuk are going to get freaked out if I uh, keep flying around with no shields and uh, weapons. You buy charm babies. We don't have to... We just buy a couple. We don't have to go visit the uh, the Humna Humna and sell them fire gems from the Jaboon. Although we could. We don't even have to buy anything from the Nelsons. I could just show you what the Nelsons are like. This would not appear to be the right planet. Do the Nelsons live on a magma planet? Do the Nelsons live on an ice planet? Do I just have the wrong freaking system? Okay, the Nelsons live on an ice planet. Inhabited by Nelsons. Stone Age te uh, tech level, moderate population density, depressed economy, bargain little. A simple, wholesome family race. The Nelsons believe in hard work and good, honest, down-home values. <laughs> They'll sell gas slugs and charm babies, and they buy poison sliders. Gliders. Poison sliders would be like hamburgers that are poisoned, like White Castle. So let's, um, or a simple homespun family race, eh? Let's buy a gas slug, because we've been warned not to do that by, I think, the Humna Hum. Some race actually told us, don't do this. And this will save us. We don't have to go visit the Jaboon. We'll just get a gas slug, fly around for a while, and see what it does. Those may be poison gliders, in which case... I could sell them to the Nelsons. I'm in an electrical storm. Some Nelsons on foot. Is it Mike Nelson of Sea Hunt fame? I'm running at risk. The longer this video goes before I cut it off, the more likely it seems like that it's going to not record, and the more upset I'll be when it doesn't record, because the more footage I'll have lost. So I really just need to end it, but now I've decided I'm going to buy a gas slug, and ugh. Howdy, good to see you. We're the Nelsons. If you're looking for a whopper of a good deal, we may just have in stock another gas slug. Just keep one of these on your ship, and you never need to worry about your crew getting injured. What do charm babies look like? Do we have a deal? Uh, let's just barter with them for funsies. I'm afraid I can't hear you. Yeah, fine. We're not going to buy too many. Well, we got enough gold, we could afford 20 of them. Sell the Jaboom. Now we can't really afford too many gas slugs, though. I must warn you, I'm new at this. That's fine. We're just gonna buy one gas slug. Oh, they don't even give you uh, the option of setting a quantity. You just buy a gas slug. All right, we're in an electrical storm. Duke Togo is injured. sure why I'm even messing around with this. I'm just curious what happens when you have a gas slug on your ship. I know it's a bad idea from everything I've heard and read about the game. But I don't think I ever bothered to test for myself what happens if you get a gas slug. I'm also wondering what happens, you're supposed to keep, I guess that your weapons have to be armed. The shields may or may not matter, but what happens if you encounter the Gnuck in a nebula? Your shields don't work there. Are they going to get angry at you for not having them up? If so, they're jerks. Alright, so let's raise the shields, arm the whoppets. Let's get out the star map and figure out where the Jaboon were. The Jaboon are at approximately 161.53. And I don't care about you, Ganuck. Yeah, I got my shields up. Leave me alone. 61 and 53. Keep your eyes for text messages on screen, not on your phone, uh, telling you about horrible impact of having a gas slug on the ship. The 
this planet isn't habitable by any chance, is it? Maybe we can have this planet be a new gas slug planet. No. Nope. Ah, uh, you know what, it might be worth it to hold on to the gas slug until it becomes a problem, just to showcase uh, what it does, and then instead of loading the game, I'll just uh, dump it in space somewhere. Dang, I accidentally switched to a new route. Uh, 161.53. Is that my fault, or is that the impact of the gas slug? That's my fault. I forgot how XY coordinates work again. Magnetic disturbances in the nebula? Okay, that's not the gas slug's fault. We could get into an encounter. Actually, that's a pretty good way of testing this. If we get into an encounter, and suddenly we can't understand what the hell anyone's saying to us, that would mean that the gas slug had decreased the score of my communications officer. Alrighty. The Jaboon. They are a race of six-legged armored behemoths, extremely unpredictable in all aspects of their behavior except for their great fondness of charm babies. So we'll sell them charm babies. And, uh... Then we'll probably freaking end the video, to tell you the truth. I was, well, we'll go to the past in the next video. I just, I don't want to let this go too long in case it doesn't take again. Or I could get it, let it go long and just hope for the best, because you guys are owed kind of a long video. It's been a while since I've been able to post this. Nidberries! Actually, hot fungus. I'm still in an electrical storm, because it followed me from another world. if there's a trading post there because there's like one of the things they buy is right next to it so I could just pick it up give it to them like hey I found this out on your porch do you want it I will sell it to you for monies it was growing outside of your shop hey don't mess with my plant there's a uh, trading post we'll try to sell them a gas slug Other than encountering the Ganuk, I can't think of a Weeb Jaboon trade now. Charm babies, yeah. Take it or leave it. Do they barter? No. Thank you for selling that is something we value most highly. We are in your debt, but they still don't like us that much. Can we sell them the gas slug? The gas slug's an artifact. Hold on a second. The gas slug's an artifact. Now I'm curious about selling that to Starport. No. I don't care about this. We gotta go sell... Ga yeah, there's some Jaboon gathering around uh, the hot fungus that they love so much. Yeah, this is an artifact. I'll want to sell it to Starport and see what it's, see what they make of it. And we gotta find the Ganuck. So yeah, we just got a whole bunch of stuff we gotta do before I can end this video. And and still probably we won't finish this trade route because we still gotta sell data crystals. I'll tell you what, folks. I'm gonna end the video. When we come back, we're gonna sell data crystals to the Nuck. No, yeah, we're going to sell data crystals to the Gnuck, buy phase inductors, head back to Starport, sell the gas slug, then we'll finally go over... Well, i got to see the Humna Humna. Ah, oh, shoot, just keep recording. <laughs> Examine Seymour Guado. He is not wounded. He has vitality of whatever. Any indication that he's high on fumes from a gas slug? No? Okay. 
Captain Bombo. Got all of our shit armed, yo. Now, the Canuck aren't actually in this nebula, if I recall correctly. They're, um... Downspin a little bit. Which of these systems is it? Ah, uh, crap. It's the furthest one down in this little cluster. I was afraid of that. Well, it's not all the way down here, but... It's at... Uh, 160.50. So basically we just gotta go straight down. And we should encounter the Ganuck uh, when we go into orbit around the planet. Wait. I was reading the wrong thing. It's at 159.30. I keep looking for the game to give us examples of my guys not being as good at their duties anymore. Oh, I'm not... I don't have my shields raised, so they're pissed. It's glowing yellow. Oh, I mean, I just got out of the damn nebula, you ass wipes. This is Starship ISS, bloop, 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 dragon. We are heavily armed. This, we require information. Comply or be de 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 destroyed. I am Captain B Bombo. We acknowledge your hail, ISS Blue Dragon. You have demonstrated the survivability of your species. Now you must surrender. I am Dominant Group Master Ganarch of the Ganuck. I, Commander B -B Bombo, demand your immediate and unconditional surrender. Prepare for death. I am the most formidable of warriors, and my ship is among the most deadly in all the sectors. The eight sectors, see? Eh? He's become the gangster villain instead of just a villain. As our fall villain. In the beginning, no species was strong enough and versatile enough to maintain dominance for long on the Ganesh Sea. Then after then from her its home atop the Great Ring Mountain, she had caused the world to shake and growl. Uh through her its fierce loving growl, she had told us of the Garash Grah, the final state of evolution, and how it might be reached only through cooperation. Thus was born Ganuk. Okay. He's not actually uh, having any trouble translating, so I'm not sure if the gas slug starts working after a while or what. But I, um... Now that I picked one up, and I've got money to spare, I still want to sell it. I can't think... I can't imagine it does long-term harm. The worst that's going to happen is starports. Like, no, we don't want that thing, and then I'll just have to jettison it into space. I don't think you can sell it back to the Nelsons. I just got taken in by some farm family. An entire race that is consisting of a farm family, apparently. Yeah, whatever, you guys. Not interested. But wait, we want to tell you about the, you know, our... Our Baraba God, and... They're like a collective group, so they are like the Barabas. They're like Karabas. You get delicious food from the Canuck. And yeah, this video is going to go long. Jeez. Shields are down. Weapons are disarmed, and now they're going to attack you because they're jerks. Yeah, uh, it would appear that the weather. <laughs> no, it's hazy. It would appear that the weather does carry over from one planet to the next. In some weird way. There's an animal sitting on top of a Ganuck house. Somebody call the fire station. Their pet murder monster is trapped on the roof. And yet no dark lightning enemy that's three times the size of the train vehicle and wants to consume us all. Oh, trade center. I didn't even notice it on the long range. Yes, I want to trade. We're gonna have children of Grog Grog or whatever. Uh, we've got some stuff that they'll buy, but... Data crystals are the big thing. And they don't barter. So we'll just agree. I think we got a pretty big profit out of that. 
shouldn't eat you. Uh, oh wait, I need to um I need to buy a trade good from them to sell the humna humna, so let's not waste all of our money buying shinium. Bay's inductors. I can only get a hundred percent of their value. I can't get them below that. Ah oh, yes, the phase inductors. Can I even barter with them? I'm pretty sure you can't. Yeah, he's angry. They don't barter at all. I offered them one shinny and penny less, and they wouldn't take it. So we got to make sure that we sell this for more than 100%, or I just wasted uh, money. And we're buying all that they've got, so... But they, yeah, they're pissed. We tried to barter with them. They're like, that ain't Gnuck or Grush. Whatever our Gnuck culture is, it ain't that, buddy. Alright, so let's get out of here before we find out that there's enemies here that are... Enemies everywhere! Well, enemy is everywhere, but uh, that their life forms here are even more dangerous than Dark Lightning. I'm pretty sure Dark Lightning is like a special killer life form that is the deadliest in the game. And that the Gnuck planet of Grush, or whatever it's called, um, is made up of dangerous but not super boss dangerous enemies they're like the th thresher mods from mass effect which were sadly almost entirely missing from mass effect 2 mostly because mass effect 2 wouldn't give you f you never got to use the flip and uh, terrain vehicle because people were like uh this isn't a first person shooter or a third person over the shoulder shooter how am i meant to play this I am retarded. Fuck it. Uh, let's use a jump pod. I don't feel like spending the time. It probably costs more than 15 units of shinium to fly here anyway. Yeah, mild fuel savings, although we'll have to spend money to replace the jump pod. It should have fairly high... Yeah, pretty high percentage accuracy because there's an, a lot of stars there and we're just jumping right close to them. Teleport successful. Yay, so let's sell the gas slug before... Never really found out what it does that's so bad, but I, maybe we just didn't keep it on the ship long enough. But now we got to replace the damn jump pod we bought too. They'll buy it for a very low price. Yeah, you pretty much can't make your money back on this. So they bought it from us for 400 Now the... Uh, and they'll sell it to us for much more than it's worth. But what I'm annoyed with is there's no analyze. So we can't actually be told what the hell it does. Let's buy a replacement jump pod. Yeah, it was a big waste of money to come here at all. But, you know, whatever. We uh, we can just remind ourselves that we bought a, a potentially very harmless and addictive drug to uh, Interstell. So that's good that we were able to do that. No new notices. Yeah, I think the, uh, the Interstell headquarters there is done giving us new stuff to, to do and talk about. Let's look at uh, personnel. Does not look like anybody's stats are permanently damaged. I'm sure I read in the manual that keeping those things around, or the the hint book, that keeping those around, a gas slug around, will wreck your toys. Will uh, wreck your crew so that they can't, like, do their jobs anymore. But apparently... Apparently you either need to keep them around for a really long time, or it's just kind of difficult to spot. So fun, we bought a gas slug. That wasn't particularly exciting. Uh, need to get into hyperspace. And where were we going to go to trade with the Humna Humna? We have to sell the Humna Humna these phase inductors before we go to... Um,
screw it, we use a jump pod, but if we jump to right here, yeah, the Tandalu were about to start talking to us, so we had no choice but to quickly use a jump pod to avoid listening to them. Use a jump pod right here. Got a good chance of making the jump successfully. We're out some credits, but whatever. We we're going to lose some gill, but jump was successful. Is this the planet with the uh, humna humna in it? Function F5, function F6. Okay. This would appear to be it. There's certainly enough humna humna ships. Sentients are present, yeah. Okay. So it looks like we're going to encounter Humna Humna ships here, but I've kind of given up on... I would take so many conversations with the Humna Humna for them to randomly offer us the trade route maps we don't already have. I'm kind of over it, so... Maybe if we start running out of things to do, and I don't feel like any of the LP we can, but... It's... I really want to get back to the plot. And I also feel like you guys have... You guys have had a to put up with a lot of trade. Trade is a lot more interesting than mining. It's a much more fun uh, way to earn money, the, uh, your main way of earning money in this game, than it was in Starflight 1, but still. Spent a lot of time dithering around and not getting onto the story, so. Okay, trade center's nearby. Be nice if you could buy jump pods from trade centers. That would be awesome, but. Nope. It is not to be. So right now we don't have our full complement of jump pods. I'm going to feel naked without having, like... I'm going to feel naked while we have a pod slot on our ship that isn't full, actually. So let's... We did leave a little bit of live long. No, I'm just going to sell one unit. That's basically just to make them happy. It's glowing green. Considering they're master traders, they really do just flat out tell you we desperately want this stuff. And we want to count. Let's just try refusing. They really like us. I can understand your hesitation. Since you are such a discerning customer, I will go to my very highest offer, 2618. Wow. I'm not even going to barter with them. That's, that's pretty good. And they're still happy with us. And we got a hell of a lot more money than we had a few minutes ago. We already have a flux scan. Vaxinol, nobody wants to buy. So let's just buy a lot of shinium. I don't think they have a limit to how much they can sell us. But at this point, I wanted to have, like... We're down to, like, 100. I wanted to have, like, 250 when we hit that... Um, And we got money, too, so if we do run into the Humna Humna some more and we want to talk to them, we can uh, get in a windstorm. We can, um, I can't seem to get this thing out, the wind song stays in my mind. We can um, still buy trade route maps if they just like start throwing them at us, you know. But I was worried about actually running out of space in the ship, because that's happened to me before. And in fact, it happened during the video that was lost. We bought a lot of fuel, and then we didn't have enough room for it. But also, I didn't get rid of uh, all of our minerals and stuff that we have. So we have one god mask, or one dream grid, two god masks, and two pieces of live long. This is just in case we need to trade with some people again. I think I jettisoned the purple screecher. I'm going to do that now on the planet's surface to wreck their, uh, their biosphere. But, um... Cobalt, yeah, we've yeah, we got 246. Wow, that's not as much shinium as I thought we had, actually. Let me uh, check our status. Cargo bay is only 63% full. I could buy a lot more than that. I'm going to go buy some more shinium. Sorry, guys. I did get a nidberry bush, didn't I? I'm kicking myself if I didn't get a nidberry bush. Ruby Malone is injured. Juke Togo is injured. JG's getting his crew killed once again. This time by weather. 
But yeah, only 60 per eight cent full. We could certainly buy some more shinium. The We Us people are most happily pleased to do trade bartering exchange of money and items. I could buy another hundred. I could buy another 150. And now I just want to see if there is a limit on what they can sell you. No room in cargo. Oh, it tells you how much room we've got in the cargo. I didn't realize it would do that. It's glowing yellow. I guess they've already forgotten that they were happy with us from last time. We bought a bunch of stuff that their own regulations apparently forced them to sell at cost. So yeah, they're kind of they're kind of lukewarm towards people who do a lot of trading and stuff on which they apparently don't make a profit at all. All right, so we want Doctor uh, Seymour to start healing whoever it was who got mostly hurt. I think it was Ruby. Slightly wounded. Flebix, not wounded. Duke Togo, slightly wounded. Well, Ruby Malone is the one that's like, Fuck you, Doctor! Doesn't really need the help. I mean, they get knocked down to like 90%. They're still pretty good. 90% health means that, like, you know, I got a slight cold or something. Okay, so... We're short of jump pot. That still bothers me a little bit, but we're going to... Um, I just really didn't want this video to keep going too much longer. We're going to head for the... Um, the place... Space is the place, yeah. We're going to head for the... Um, the special magical flux that takes you to the past. Two forty four one forty nine. Unidentified objects are here. It's the humna humna, but I Hell greetings well precisely hello. This is the trade ship blah blah blah. Which is at this time mailing you on various appropriate frequencies you may not choose to answer your discretion, I might add. Well, he did say it's at our discretion. Normally I would talk to them, but this video has gone almost an hour now, and we need to I I really just for my own sake need to be parked outside that flux ready to go to the past when the next video starts because that's what I said I was going to do and it's just killing me this video went even longer than the last one and in that last one the one that well, the one that that disappeared um I'd done all that stuff with uh you know I bought I bought the delightful fungus shoes and sold it to the humna humma I didn't even show you guys that Instead, well, I added all that crap with the Nelsons. That's why it went even longer. Alright, guys. So I need to be ready to let go of this button at a moment's notice. As soon as we see this thing, we got to be ready to go back in time. But I also got to be ready to end the video. And be ready to stop. I need to check the coordinates and make sure I didn't do something wrong. Okay, we're close. I knew I was getting close. I was wondering if I'd overshot it because I was off on my X coordinate. I'm gonna go back in time. And I did overshoot it. <sighs> what the hell? 244, 149. So we'll get ourselves to about 244, 150, and then creep forward. Scanner's indicated unidentified object and is glowing green. This is probably the Negra Arla. I think they patrol this area of space. Yeah, if it's glowing green, they must be in their uh, Arla phase. But I just feel I always feel so guilty when I don't talk to them. But I just need to get on with it. So, folks, assuming this video actually takes and is not consumed by Camtasia next time. After this double length video of trading, running around, getting stuff that I knew not only do we not need, we don't even want, like gas slugs. Next time, we are going to go into the past and we're going to kick this plot loose. We got to go find the six yellow stones because once we find the six yellow stones, we'll be able to draw a line between them and the hook constellation. And then, if I understand my geometry correctly, uh, we're looking for the place that forms an equilateral triangle which means that there are two possible places, so we'll have to check and see if one of them points to a planet. 
or a system. And uh, if it does, we go there. If it doesn't, we've done something wrong. This is the Mysterious JG. I want to thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you next time when we go back to visit the Dweenal and the good Legic and the evil Legic. Mm -hmm. Could be interesting. Could be deadly. See you next time.